Okay, so we are being recorded. Uh, hopefully you should be seeing the couple of chair slides. Um, so I'm Stephen Farrell, Militia is there too. I guess you can say hi or send video Militia or something if you wish. Hello, yes, this is Militia. And so welcome to the Lake Working Group Interim. The links are all on the first slide there, Charter Jetta Jabber Room. Um, I'm, I'm keeping an eye on the Jabber Room, I guess. And we have the Etherpad as well, the materials link, WebEx, and so on. Uh, I guess we should display the note well, and you can read it and think about it deeply for a moment. Um, as with all ITF meetings, it's subject to various BCPs to do with good behavior and IPR rules and so on. So you should be familiar with that. And here's our repetitive agenda. Um, so this is kind of the same agenda we had for the last few interims. Um, so this is we're on point zero, which is administrivia and agenda bash. Then we'll have a very short update from Marco on interop. I think that's uh, you know, next time will be more substantive. I think it's that's a pretty quick interop or update. And then Joran and John, I guess, will talk talk us through the ad hoc status and okay. issues. And I, uh, John, reckon that might be about thirty minutes or so. Uh, is that roughly correct, Joran? Yeah, I think so. Um, I, I will need help to share slides. I, I joined through Safari, so I will need someone to help me share slides. <laughs> so I, I have the slides here, so I can. Oh. Sure, I have the slides here, so I can attempt to do that. Thank you. And uh, if I muck up, we'll try something else. And then we have some, we should have plenty of time for any other business and hopefully be wrapped up within the hour. Uh, so any agenda bashing? Not hearing any, uh, and we have a note taker, thanks to Jonathan. Um, the Etherpad link was posted in the chat. I'll just do it again. Uh, so please just check that your name is, is there in the list of people attending so that we get that right. And given there's no agenda bash, and I think that's all the administrative. Did I forget anything, Militia? Oh, uh, I don't think so. So I propose oh, no, we I, either I did or, or we both did, I guess. That's good. Yes. Um, so with that, I guess we can hand over to Marco and to just give a quick update on interop status. So Marco. Yes. Uh, Marco Hi, has no everyone. slides, by the way, so don't expect any. Right. Uh, yeah. Hi, everyone. Uh, I just have a small update on this topic. Um, my implementation for Californium is aligned to version 11 of the draft, and it validates against the latest test vectors in the separate traces draft uh, version one. Uh, as far as I know, there were no uh, tests after ITF 111, but I know other people are also uh, busy and working on updating uh, their own implementations. So as soon as uh, there's at least a second implementation aligned with version 11, we can arrange an interop session. And as more come, we can have a, a larger interop party like, like we did in the past. I also plan to be at the hackathon um, in, in a month or so during which we can also run tests. Uh, so when anyone is ready, I suggest to just uh, reach out to me, the ad hoc authors, and we can organize a first interop session. Uh, otherwise, if any implementer in the room has it, any update or information about their ongoing implementation, just please chime in. Uh, hello, can you hear me? Yes, yes, yes. we can. Timothy, yes. go ahead. Okay, great. Uh, yeah, so I'm also working on uh, updating my ad hoc implementation um, to the latest draft. So uh, once I'm done, I will ping you, Marco, and maybe we can set up um, a test and uh, a test session to see if uh, everything works. Yeah, looking forward. That's all for me, at least. That's great. Thanks. Uh, any questions or comments on interrupt status otherwise? If not, I shall attempt to swap the slide deck. So just talk among yourselves while things happen. Who should present, John? Should I start? You fill in, or do you want to? That's all. Awesome. Yeah. 
Okay. So my computer thinks it's sharing slides now, and please correct me if that's not the case. It looks fine. Great. So just yell next slide whenever you want me to do that. Okay. Thanks. So hello, everybody. Uh, this is the consolidated slides with the two drafts. Now the ad hoc draft and the annotated traces. Uh, so ad hoc is in version 11, traces in, in version 1. Next slide, please. So uh, as usual, we go through the main changes. Uh, we have done uh, a number of submissions since ITF 111, which was our latest meeting, our last meeting. Um, we go through the changes and then uh, the open issues and next steps. Next slide, please. So the two slides on the main changes. Um, there were changes to the key derivation, as we discussed in the last meeting uh, and agreed. The uh, MAC2 and MAC3 are now generated directly from the ad hoc KDF. Uh, there was a change in the KDF in the the info field, uh, in the info field, there is a context, a byte string, which is now general and explicit in the KDF. So that's where we put in the message, uh, the byte string formatted message, which then generates the MAC for that message. We also realized in the info field, the first, uh, um, the first item in the info, info field contained the ID of the AAD algorithm used in ad hoc. Uh, but that is, uh, was already included in the selected cipher suite, which was in the suite's I uh, field, which is included in all transcript hashes. So we took that out. And as a result of changing, uh, changing the MAC generation, we, we could also simplify the labeling uh, used for, for KDF and exporter. So all this changed, of course, the test vectors and so on. So those were the main changes. Key derivation, then in terms of cipher suites, uh, suites I um, used to allow the initiator to um, put in all its, its preferred, uh, all its supported algorithms. We now uh, made the change, so suites I only contains the selected and the more preferred algorithms. So starting with the most preferred and going down to the selected. And we think this simplifies, this certainly simplified specification. We think this simplifies um, the implementation as well. Uh, and uh, yeah, consequence of that is that, that there's, there's basically no change in functionality. The responder can still um, can still show which which algorithm is supported by by sending that back in the error message. So so it's uh, slightly less flexible from the initiator point of view, but but no uh, no difference in what what can be supported in terms of uh, common common algorithms. There's also change in what suites I what does a suite means. So a suite now also contains one. Uh, item indicating the length of the MAC uh, used for static, in the case of static Hel Diffie-Hellman. That's the MAC of the ad hoc, uh, in, in, used in ad hoc. So that was previously inferred from other uh, algorithms, but now it's an explicit number. Um, then there are some changes related to message size, which, which was sort of for, for trimming the message size. As you remember from, from the last meeting, we discussed the combination to combine the ephemeral key of the responder with the ciphertext in message two into one Seaboard byte string. And that was something we said at the last meeting that we should do after, uh, um, after we have completed the, the protocol or after in, in working group last core or something we said. And then we realized that that would again change test vectors and it's, it's really a small change. So we decided to do it. That was also a mail to the mailing list asking for comments and there were no comments on this. So, so we now basically closed uh, this issue. We don't have any reason to optimize messages 
anymore, at least not from the base, from uh, based on the requirements document. And so we basically have taken into account that with this this change, this optimization message too. Uh, another thing we discussed at the last meeting was um, the, the extension of, was the use of int uh, in key identifiers. As you may remember, we had something called the KID2, uh, which was could be a key identifier being either a Cibor byte string or a Cibor int. And after discussion in COSI on the mailing list, um, they uh, we got the agreement and the slight preference for actually making this change in the KID instead. So extending the KID from only supporting byte strings to also support Cibor ints. And that's uh, so. So that was and was also proposed that we actually do this in the update of RFC eighty one fifty two. So there is now a PR against that. It's going to be discussed in COSI next week. And if that goes through, then we can take out the ITF the um, IANA registration in this draft. Any questions on on this? Then we go to the next slide. So not a question for me, but I just I guess people should just jump in if they have a question or comment at any point. I guess really. Y yes, please. Yeah, don't just, don't feel you need to wait for the end. <laughs> right, just interrupt. Okay, so a number of CWT Cibor Web Token related changes. A minor thing we changed the name, so we are now using the term C. Uh, there is in in RFC 8392 the Cibor Web Token RFC. Uh, it's defined the C CWT claim set, which is uh, the CWT without its wrapping COSI sign or COSI encrypt or COSI MAC. Uh, and that we, we use the abbreviation CCS uh, in this document. And what we've defined, uh, so, so okay, so this is over, overall, this bullet is about using CWTs as uh, credentials for ad hoc. So. In, as a complement to X509. So we want to be able to use them as certificates or as raw public keys. And uh, for that purpose, we have defined two uh, cozy header parameters for transporting CWT and CCS. And they are called KCWT and KCCS. And they also appear in an issue later. And But that, what that basically means is that it's a CWT or a CCS with a CNF claim and containing a COSI key. So it's a wrapped COSI key. And there are more details added on this in the draft and also adding key identifiers in the example. I think we can leave this. this is a, there is another issue coming up on, on this point specifically. Uh, now external authorization data has been, the syntax has been changed. So it now it's a Seaboard sequence consisting of uh, label value pairs, labels defined in the ANA re registry and uh, with, together with uh, some reference to specification which has the value. And um, this now supports multiple EAD types in one message. Um, and we think this is useful for when you want to combine different types of, of EADs. And there were some Section changes, some reformatting or restructuring of sections. Section four with key derivation is now full of subsections. And section three five is restructured and, and changed a lot in terms of clarifications. Uh, what is what what is COSI and what is ad hoc? That that needed to be a bit sorted out. And there is a new section on mandatory to implement, which also has a separate issue. We'll get back to that. And finally, a number of, of uh, mixed changes. Uh, we updated the message sizes. Hopefully, they are correct now. Uh, this terminology on forward secrecy. By request from Marco, we added this uh, a, a resource type uh, for, for, for ad hoc. Uh, we have this byte, this centennial byte, first byte of message one. In, when you use co op transport, it used to be null and then there was some uh, confusion about whether that what that actually meant so it was proposed to change to nil and that was a pro problem with Cbor diagnostic notation so now it's finally ending up being true so the Cbor 
simple type true is the first byte, uh, it's the first um, field of message one in co-op transport. Uh, and then some CDL definitions, security considerations, and figures. Yes, that's about it. Any questions on this page? No? Next, please. So here are the open issues as of today, I think. Oh, no, oh, no I, sorry, I missed the, there was a question about post-quantum, which is not here, but ex apart from that, I think this is up to date. And what's plan? the plan now is to go through uh, maybe two thirds of these and try to, some of these are already addressed and we'd like to have confirmation from the working group that we did it in the right way. And some we need some more discussion. And then we'll end up with a few left, uh, which we think we don't need to address, I think, or it's, yeah, let's, let's get, get back to what's left, <laughs> but at least we're going to get through some of the, some of the open issues now. So next slide, please. Uh, this was a request from Christian. I don't know if Christian is here. Uh, I don't see him right now, but, uh, um, basically, what he wanted to do was to tune down the requirement to use CON. Uh, and this is basically for co-op transport. Um, we, instead of saying that they are necessarily transported as confirmable messages, we now say the underlying transport should use a uh, reliable mode. And I think that's, um, there was a specific reason, and I, I would like Christian to motivate more detail why this wasn't a big change, it's just a matter of how you use uh, co-op, which seemed reasonable. Unless there are any comments on this one, we can go to the next one. Or uh, are you okay with this, by the way? Is anyone having an objection? Let, let me know, otherwise we'll just do this change. Carson is fine, thank you. Okay. Um, right, so, so this was, uh, an inconsistency in registration procedures. There was a mix of expert review and specification required. Uh, only one of them required a specification. So we proposed to make all of them expert review. And we asked if there's any problem with that. There is also another question whether we need to make a differentiation between assigning um, short identifiers and long identifiers, like one byte identifiers. Uh, and so on. That's currently not the case. Um, are, are people happy with this setting? The, everything is expert review and the expert decides whether whether it should be allocated a, a um, short number or short value or long value. Yeah, the expert may, be, expert may be happy if uh, uh, she can point to uh... A sentence in the uh, specification that says we are going to be frugal with the small numbers. Right. So just just instruct the expert to be frugal yeah. with the small numbers, and that will yeah. make them happy. Yes, I mean there is a, there is already an um, expert instruction, so we could if if that's not there, then we'll we should add that. Okay. Good. Any other comments, Sean? Uh, just a question. Yep. Um, so, so this issue of changing IANA registration rules is typically something that might come up as a ESG review or because you know, or last call or whatever. Um, does it matter too much to us? You know, we prefer expert review, I guess. It seems. Uh, does it matter that much if that toggles back to specification required for something, or do we care much or not? Just so I'm just asking for so I have the background. Uh, from our point of view, I don't think it matters a lot. I think this is a little bit following what COS is doing. And, and I think Jim was in preference of it. That, that's sort of my, maybe John has another take on, on why we're actually having expert review all over. John? I don't know if John is talking or but I don't hear anything, or maybe he isn't there just now. So I would say, 
I mean, this is this, this is not a major issue from my point of view. If we want to have, it, it's probably more flexible to have the expert review, but if specification required is what. Yeah. Here just comes to be on. clear, right? Just just to be clear, this is Sean Turner. Just to be clear, right? Expert review um, implies spec required, right? Like you have to write something down for them to review. Whether whether you accept it, whether you accept a a non IETF related thing as a specification is really the question. Right, that's a good good point then. Um, so okay, so now I think I probably misunderstood this. I thought it was like this that there were certain. I mean, usually certain fields require specification. Other can be assigned with just the expert review. Uh, but you are saying that spec spec would be needed for uh, for all registrations, or did I misunderstand you? Yeah, like that's exactly right. You have to have something to review. So typically, there's some, there's some kind of specification. Okay, but that's that doesn't have to be that, that that's not necessarily an, an RFC or or an, or an external um, standard. It's it's some. It, it's whatever, Something's... whatever stuff has got to get written down. Yeah. So, yeah, because the idea is the designated expert, right, has to be able to understand that it's it's well implementable, it's referable, right, and that it you know it it's basically got some some uh, possibility of being interoperable. Okay, so 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 that maybe I'm I'm confusing with standards action, which actually is something like an RFC. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, I think okay, I need to read, so, read up a little. Go ahead, Stephen. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and so, so you can be sure that somebody will comment on this at some point. Uh, it always happens. Uh, but I think generally the sense of the working group so far seems to be we're okay with expert review. We're not that fussed about whether the specification is part of an RFC or some other source. Uh, you know, I think that's fine um, if people are happy with that. I, I... Detailed instruction for the expert so that the low numbers are not given away. Like in CUSI, they're all there. Very small numbers are already gone, for example. Yeah, Sean points out here that, that we, yes, there is 914, uh, and it says specifications are recommended in that section. When specifications are not provided, the description provider needs to have sufficient information to verify. Yeah, so there basically needs to be something written down. I think we're in agreement on that. So, but but what, I don't see that we actually. Uh, I mean, what we say here is the length of encoded value should be weighed against how many code points are exist. So, I mean, maybe the statement about the Karsten had about Krugel. Frugal uh, use of of small points is actually addressed already. I should have brought this up and commented, so we could have commented on the same text. But anyway, we have nine fourteen as the reference here, and um, I think that, as I see it, we actually have what people have been talking about already: uh, the uh, what is a specification and what is how to encode the. Um, how to uh, put economy on the on the code points, or are we missing anything? Maybe you don't have it in front of you. Yeah, no, no. I think it's pretty, I think it seems pretty clear, and and now we can point back to the meeting notes and say that we discussed it, and if people comment later, we can point them at that and say the working group thought about it. That's that can be useful. Okay. Yeah, so I just Thanks. pasted into the chat the relevant point from 914. Yeah, thank you. Okay, let's 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 go on then. That thank, thanks for all the input. Um, we'll we'll consider that and, uh, and make sure that we take this into account. Next issue. Uh, so there were two issues related to. Um, ID credx and credx. Here's the first one. Basically, this issue says that we should be very clear on that ID credx. So X here stands for either I or R. 
initiator responder, and that those are basically COSI header maps and therefore defined in COSI. Ad hoc relies on COSI, ad hoc supports the credential types according to COSI. So that, that was this issue, and we also uh, add, as mentioned previously, these new header parameters for CBO web tokens and CWP web um, claim sets. And this was discussed in the design team meeting, and this was the, out the outcome was this name and this, this description essentially. And we'd like to confirm that with the working group uh, that we don't have any objection to this. Uh, so this is not a general CWT. This case CWT is not sort of is not intended for general use of of web tokens. It's when you transport a COSI key uh, in this way. And unless there are any objections, and and same thing for KCC. I think. So uh, so so if you don't have any objections, we will stay with that. And next slide, please. Uh, which was also discussed in the sign team meeting. And uh, so this is, in contrast to the previous slide, this is something that ad hoc should define. I mean, it's not, not we are not relying on COSI here. This is, uh, we need to say what is the credential cred I and cred R that makes, that the initiator and responder both use so that they agree on the same credential being used. This is input to the integrity calculation. And then we have this proposal here, uh, the four sub bullets, which is making clear what exactly what what this credential is. So, in case of X509 certificates, you cred X shall be the end entity certificate, the Duran encoded certificate, wrapped into a CBOR byte string. So that should make it uh, well defined. In case of C509, there is something. Uh, called a C509 certificate, which is already CBOR. So we can use that. Otherwise, it's also the end entity certificate. In case of a COSI key in a CBOR web token, then the CREDX shall be the untagged CWT. So there may be a CBOR tag that's taken out before you put it into CREDX and verify integrity. And the last case, if it's a COSI key, but it's not in a CWT, then you should put it in a CCS. So, um, and, and without the tag, because there might be tag, CBOR tags on CCS. So naked COSI keys are dressed up as CCS, and that's really simple. You take the COSI key and you prefix it with this byte string here, and that gives you an untagged CCS. And then you can use it in CREDX, so you can verify integrity. That was a proposal from the design team. Any, any comments on that? Otherwise, we go with that. Uh, not, uh, well, there was also an issue discussion in, in 160. You can look up the issue discussion, which happened before, before the design team. Some other things coming out of the design team, if we go on here, is uh, sh should we... So these are CBOR maps, right? So they might... The initiator might have one order of the labels, and the responder might, in theory, have another order of the labels. And that won't work. Uh, so, should we force a particular uh, ordering of the labels? And the proposal from the sign team is that we, uh, the initiator and responder, should use the available authentication credential. How, how you got it, we don't care. So, it might be transporting ad hoc, or you might have been provisioned by some some other mechanism, but you should just use it. And that, I mean, in most cases, this will be wrapped in a byte string and there won't be any, any re-encoding along the way. So we think that the, we don't want to enforce uh, or, or force um, encodings without, without reason. But if re-encoding coding may occur um, for some reason, then we uh, highlight uh, the common encoding we think should be used or or may be used, and that's to use this bytewise lexicographical order, which is defined in CBOR, in the CBOR specification. So that's the proposal for trying to get the same credential on both sides. And those so are the things. So, so, hey, Goran, with respect to re-encoding, way back in the day, 
when we did um, the Sergio Dix 509 stuff and there was a lot of re-encoding and encoding and it caused all kinds of problems. This seems like a pragmatic approach to move forward. Uh, don't do it, you know, unless you really, really got to do it. And if you do it, there's dragons. So I think that that totally makes sense. Um, so I wasn't on the design team. So I just want to say that this sounds like a good way forward. Thank, thank you very much. Great feedback. And yeah, I just want to mention on the last item here that it might actually be that both initiator and responder creates the credential. They might, they might not be transport. And that's, that's one, one example when you might want to have an, an order agreed. And there is something called this applicability statement, which, which the initiator and responder need to agree on, on, on a lot of things. And that, that could, then you can include that you will use like lexicographic order. Okay, but great. Thank you. Gore, and, I, I am yes, curious about the last the last question though. Oh Do yeah, you that's, think that's, that they, yeah, sorry. It's like, thank you. Yes, that's that, that's that's my next point. Excellent. So so that's I mean that's nothing we'd like to discuss now. Well, we can discuss it if you think, but what what we I mean we're using CWTs like X509 certificates in some cases. And then we have the COSI draft, the uh, COSI X509 draft which defines a lot of things related to uh, how you use X509 with CBOR, uh, with COSI, sorry. Uh, and, and what we actually propose today for the COSI working group is that we sh may want to do something similar for CWT, but we think that it should be done in COSI, not in, in Lake. So, Sean, go ahead. What do you think? I'm uh, not sure that it matters where it gets done, but I think this, this, uh, Similar. I think it makes sense to probably do something that's similar. Where, where it gets done, I'm not sure that it matters, right? Because it's just a registry setting, right? Yeah. Well, I mean, there's a lot of security considerations as well, actually. And if you look through the this X509 COSI draft, so there, there are quite a few details that someone need to think think through. I think there might be there might be. Security considerations when you use them in COSI that are not applicable to ad hoc. Ad hoc always put the end um, entity certificate in the external AAD, with, which COSI does not do, which result in that you might have additional security considerations. Do you need X5U? Carson, we haven't. I haven't actually. So I just put the list of the things here. Yeah. I haven't thought it through. So because that, that, that has completely different security considerations than the rest. So um, I think we have to be a bit careful there. Right. Yeah. Okay. So so there you go. That's the reason why someone should think think this through. Yeah, okay. So so I think. We, we seem yeah, to be agreed probably. that someone should uh, think it through. And are we agreeing that it should be somebody else, or that, do we think it should be the Lake Working Group? Well, we so have we... to check whatever somebody else comes up with. But uh, I think the, the thinking should initially be done by somebody else. And we, we are, I mean, basically, what, whatever we do for, for ad hoc, we, we take care of here. But there is, a, as John mentioned, there is a more general question about use of, of uh, CWTs, chains of CWTs, for example, which probably is not on, on our on our agenda. Okay, so so I'm not hearing anybody say that this working group should immediately lead the work on chains of CWTs. Um, and bearing in mind that that's a fine, that, you know, this kind of Functionality is a fine source of implementation bugs, um, and and lots of work needs, can be needed to handle it properly. Then, uh, reacting to somebody else figuring it out is probably easier for us, all right. Okay, yeah, I think that's a good starting point. Okay, next slide then. No, before you go to the next slide, there is some terminology on this slide that uh, you cannot understand after you have read AD949. So maybe we have to work on that terminology. Um, is it their deterministic encodings or? 
Well, what does it mean for a certificate wrapped in a CBOR byte string? Do you mean a CBOR byte string with a certificate in it? Which is very different from wrapped in a CBOR byte string because then you would have nesting of two byte strings, a byte string with a byte string with a the encoding of a byte string. Just trying to make sure that we understand what we are doing there. Right. Okay. Yeah. Let's let's take that offline. That's a good yes, please. Good point. Thank you. I'll make a note of that. Okay. Next slide, please. Um, yes. So this. Let's see. Now, what's the time? So may, maybe we we skip this slide to the end. So this is basically there is a um, the separate draft. Uh, called traces, and it, it only contains the these annotated traces that we used to have in an appendix. And one of the issues is to to get feedback if the content is right on this draft. And there is also other things related to to the draft, whether it needs to be adopted or how we proceed. So so maybe if if people are okay, we skip this and bring it at the end if we have time. Okay, good. Um, Right, so this was also an input from Christian, and it's basically what he's requesting is for the setting when there is not so much randomness available for a device, and we still want to, I mean, we still need to generate ephemeral keys. Uh, he wanted us to outline how to use a mon monotonous counter, similar to, there's an appendix in OSCORE about how, how to handle when you lose context, lose when you need to uh, lose cache. Uh, sorry, when when the RAM is cleared and you need and you reboot, for example, and how you handle um, with storing to volatile memory on um, not too frequently, and and uh, how how to manage uh, to picking up from from loss of loss of state. And um, he wanted to have something similar for using a monotonous counter and a secret a, a Secret only known to the device to to generate that's provisioned or somehow and, and that to generate randomness. And I wonder, uh, we thought we should close this, but we haven't really addressed that. And we haven't provided a reference, so I wonder if people have a good reference or if we should should uh, outline the procedure for using a KDF and, and a private secret and a counter and also some thoughts around how frequently you need to store to volatile memory and so on to not um not have a bad uh, uh bad performance and bad properties of this device what what do people think do we, should we have a, is there a reference already should we make should we write this text it's a very open question could i formulate it similar saying should we skip it I think uh, so. Point. Just a question: when, when you say randomness, is that for uh, use as a public nonce or equivalent, or for use as a secret? So the randomness, the purpose of randomness is to be able to generate good ephemeral keys, for example, or other good random numbers in the protocol run. But that's, I mean, mainly the reason is to have the, an ephemeral key. So that's how you want to use randomness. And if you don't have a good randomness source, you need to do something else. And if you have state, that should be sufficient. Um, so you have a monotonous counter, you feed the counter and the private secret into some, some pseudo random function and you get out uh, some, some number that you could use. I... So, so that sounds like a key derivation function, in which case I would imagine that handling that by referencing seems much better. I think the yeah, but... document already referenced the CFR draft on how to generate randomness. Yes, I mean, so so yes, so it it it, it references the CFR draft. It references OSCOR appendix on how on on using sort of this infrequent storage non to uh, non volatile memory, but it doesn't really describe more in detail how you combine them it, it, this i mean it, it may be sufficient what's written currently and um, i don't know how, how 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 often i mean basically you you can take those pieces and and build your um 
your solution here is is it uh, i think what what christian says in this issue is that he, he has found that but he won't like he would like to have more details so that's probably what we should decide on whether we think we we have done <laughs> he's right or, or whether whether we mm -hmm. think that we've done sufficient uh, Marco here, this rings also another bell. I think this was done also for the echo request tag document uh, in core. If you look at Appendix A, and there were different options for generating uh, the echo value, and one was relying on, on counters and was pointing also to OSCORE B11. So probably you may want to do something similar to that here too, just to not reinvent the same thing again. So are you saying that we should write something more than currently there and be inspired by what's in the appendix of Echo well, Request Tag? Th that appendix A of Echo Request Tag can be a, a starting point uh, to what to do here and probably something very similar to that. And that appendix is pointing also to to the OSCORE appendix B11. Mm, okay. But does that have the same security requirements? I think the security requirements for, for what Echo needs are much less stringent than the ones you, you need for keys. Uh, so, if I understand Marco right, it's, it's more like the, the general, uh, uh, I mean, description of, it, it, it's a, I think this is a level of abstraction thing. So, so currently we say that use Appendix B and OSCORE, get inspired by that and use the CFRD RFC for generating randomness. And then you can put put things together, and and the appendix A in echo request tag is, is very detailed, sort of looking at if you want. Uh, uh, this is this is the uh, the entropy you need, uh, something like that. So, so that's that's perhaps a, a more like a level of abstraction. How much detail should we put in, into ad hoc, and what should we leave out? So, so just uh, you know, as an individual, uh, as opposed to as, as a chair, if it kind of smells like a KDF, it's po possibly better to use a well-known KDF and not refer to something homegrown or something that is intended for use other than for generating keys. Yes, clearly. Yes, we, we will not define any. We, I mean, we will use whatever KDF construction that is, that is used elsewhere. We will not define anything. So what 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 I'm looking at? So, so if you remember from append from Oscar Appendix B, there is basically it's a procedure saying that every kth value you will store when you, you step a sequence number and every kth value you you store to non volatile memory, and if you lose context, then you read read and you you move to the this kth value or, or the next uh, uh, you, you you move to k plus one so to speak. So it, it's it's basically handling the, the problems that you might have lost lost context. I think that is something that's not clear just by referencing KDF. So it's not it's not actually going into the KDF. So, okay, okay, but that I, sounds I like really... CBC res. That that that's kind of sounds like the CBC residue mechanisms that were used in banking decades ago. Um, yeah, I, 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 yeah, I guess. There, this is one that's I think probably worth thinking about a little because uh, a it's good to do a good job and b because if you if somebody reviewing it later might decide that we haven't quite done a good enough job if we're generating keys because um, I you know the details of KDFs and their analysis is beyond me I know that um, so whether you know whether it's okay to store a, a residue from the last n keys and then use that for to, to generate the end the you know a key in future um is, is perhaps a non-trivial question it seems like something that should be discussed in the github this does not really seem to be yeah okay done for discussion here i would say yeah i think i think it was great input for this discussion let's uh, let's move on and, and take this in the github yes and, there's a time uh, track we have 40 minutes to go until the top of the hour so yeah yes Thank you. Yeah, don't we want to discuss traces and how, how to handle that? Yes, let's the move on. This can be discussed on GitHub, the traces document, what to do with that, we cannot. If you if you think so, John, yes. Let's let's move on.
so we had also this issue. Do you think we should skip it, John? Or should we? Maybe we can give a quick feedback on this one. Um, or just, we, I just mentioned it and then, then people can, can, uh, can contribute to the, to the GitHub. So uh, there are a number of uh, things now specified in this new section seven, which is the mandatory to implement section. And there are some questions regarding what, what actually should be mandatory to implement. So what COSI header parameters, what credential types, support for uh, external authorization data. So please provide your input to the GitHub. Next slide, please. Test vectors, I think we skipped this one as well. Just noted that we are, there is now JSON and, and there are two, two minor things uh, remaining in, uh, uh, no, not minor, but the two things remaining to complete this issue. And we, we are asking for help if people want to help out with real certificates and uh, new Cypher suites, that would be great. Next slide. So um, this leaves us with uh, a few issues. And the, two, the green two lines is something we will be able to address before the cutoff. And then we have just a few issues to go and uh, not much to work on actually. So this is just for information that we think we are done essentially with the with the issues and the next slide, please. Okay, next slide, thank you. So, so we, we think the protocol is in, in quite good shape for reviewing, testing and analyzing. It would be good to have volunteers to review and uh, there would be new interrupt testing as Marco mentioned. And also um, some input around the security analysis would be Great, if there is anything available now or if there should be an announcement. And also we don't, we think this could be potentially ready for working group last call. So that's basically a status of this draft. And then if you flip back to the traces draft, the issue 169. Uh, for, forward. There we are. Right, do you wanna take this John? I don't know. You wrote the traces draft, so maybe you. <laughs> okay. I, I think this is, I don't know, the, the last slide how to proceed and, and this, what to do with this draft, I think we should have time to discuss. I think that small technical issues can, can wait and be discussed on GitHub. Uh, okay. So let's, let's, uh, let's do this now and then we go back to the last slide uh, when we're done, if we have more time. I don't know if so, we should uh, discuss if we should, I think the, if we should discuss if to working group adopt this draft, which would be kind of natural, just a split of the old draft. Yes, I think yeah. that is an easy one indeed. So I, based from the input we got from our AD during the last meeting, it seemed like we, I mean, he seemed positively inclined to having this adopted as, a, as an additional draft that we can also publish as an RFC. So, Stephen, maybe we can seek for the working group uh, opinion on adopting this uh, as a working group document. Sure, I do have a question though. Um, yes. So, I, 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 you know, I, asking for adoption seems entirely reasonable and sensible. And I'm, I, I, I'm gonna bet the answer will be yes. Um, but the question I have is, uh, do we want to publish this as an RFC? Um, so and the reason I ask is that can be a lot of work. Um, sometimes these things people will keep producing additional uh, examples that are useful. And if we produce it as an RFC, it, you know, obviously we, won't, we probably won't revise the RFC over and over. Uh, so there can be, you know, it might be creating ourselves a bit of delay or maybe the option of just producing it as an internet draft and leaving it as a draft might be better. I don't know. Um, so I just want to check with people, what do they think the final best way of publishing this stuff might be? Uh, Maybe I could say, say a few words on the intent with the draft before people comment. Sure, go ahead. So, so, so this is, this is a, um, a compliment. I mean, there, as, as, as you mentioned there, Stephen, there, there might be a lot of different uh, test vectors here. And, and this, uh, this is intended as uh, a few 
runs which are annotated traces. So you basically describe for each step what calculations is made, what is the input, what is the output, what are the keys used, and so on, and intermediate processing results. So um, it doesn't have to be, I mean, we, the intent with the question about the content here is whether we should act, what exactly what should be the scope of this document, what, what traces should we document. And currently it's method zero, uh, authenticated with signatures, and X509 identified with X5T and method three. So that's authentication static Diffie-Hellman using CCS identified by KID. So those are the two examples. And we might say, the working group might say that, okay, that's fine, let's just do those. And that will give sufficient detail for a first implementation. And then there is these, this catalog of test vectors, which for version 11 is, is linked here. So, so we don't need to have, um, a comprehensive sort of a, an encyclopedia of, of different traces. It could just be a few, just to get the implementations right if you're stuck on some, some step in the spec. So, sorry, go ahead. Now the floor is open for comment. Yeah, no, that's, that's a fair point. So, so yeah, any, any other thoughts on destination of this draft? Uh, opinions as to whether we should adopt it or not? I presume those will be positive, but feel free to offer them. Hey, this is Sean. I got no problem with uh, adopting this. Uh, also with publishing it, I, having, having um, been involved in a really long draft of examples, what Steven described as the um, endless uh, death by ducks will happen because they'll, people will keep providing examples. You should probably just pick the ones that you really care about up front and just say, we're done with it. Um, you could also set up a GitHub, um, you know, repo for examples and just pile them up there. But if you really want to publish something, I got no problem with it. Okay, thanks. Other comments? Uh, Fair enough. Okay, so I think then probably for the action, there should be an action for the chairs then to do a call for adoption. And we should make it clear in that that the intent is, as Joran said there, that it's a you know a, a curated set of annotated examples, not a not a comprehensive set that keeps expanding. Um, and and with I presume the intent eventually of publishing an RFC containing them. I think it might be enough with the current two traces, method zero and method three. I think method zero should be changed. So the, it's currently not a, a real X509 certificate so that needs to be changed. And then the cipher suit there should probably be ECDSA. But I think uh, there's not that much value provided in additional um, uh, traces that can be provided in JSON format on uh, GitHub instead. Yeah, in the interest of time, I propose we move this to the mailing list and we move on with the uh, with the summary of ad hoc draft. Yeah. Okay, so I think I presented this. I don't know if there is any answer to the questions down there. Do we have volunteers to review? And uh, interop we already talked about. Security analysis is something that would be good too, if there is any input on that. So let's let's tackle the first of those first. Um, so could could I, uh, just to be clear, we have draft eleven, draft twelve will probably pop out in what time frame, and then I'm going to ask for people who'd be willing to review whichever of those is the most appropriate. Uh, twelve will be by before cutoff. Okay, so 12 is in a few weeks. So, so I, I guess we're looking for people to volunteer to say they'll do a, a, a reasonably thorough read of draft 12. So if you're willing to do that, please make yourself known. And I'd like to get you know a few people who haven't been intimately involved with the text so far. So any volunteers to, to spend a little bit of reading time in, in a few weeks? Uh, Marco here, I will review version 12. Thank you. Others? It'd be really great to get somebody who hasn't read this in a long time. I'll, uh, I'll volunteer. This is Kathleen Moriarty. Thanks, Kathleen. Yep. 
Any other victims? Oh, sorry, volunteers, volunteers. Any other volunteers? Well, one more, one more. I can do that. He is Stephen. Thank you. Great, and 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 I'll I'll also commit you know as to to, to do the same at uh, once draft twelve is out. Um, okay, so we have yeah. some volunteers. Uh, any? Sorry, go ahead. No, no, I, I was just going to comment on the timeline. So we're looking at uh, the IT one twelve timeline, I suppose, to have these reviews in. Uh, yes, ideally yes, but I mean on, on draft twelve, so I presume uh, draft thirteen will pop out short, at some point. So hopefully before that. Um, and Sean did say he would review, but don't write his name down. But I'll remember anyway. Uh, okay, so interop. I think Marco, uh, do, do you have Marco? Do, do you have any more to say about interop, or do, um, do you want to try and recruit somebody else? Well, we know Timothy already, and I'm sure someone else will show up. Uh, we need to know from them. Uh, latest at the Akaton, I hope something will happen. <laughs> Hopefully sooner than then. I am also right. working. Okay, and... Sorry. Uh, I just on. wanted yep. to say that I'm as well working on an update of my implementation. So, Marco, I will let you know when I'm so far. Great. Thanks. Good stuff. Uh, and then on terms of analysis, uh, Militia, I don't know if you, you, you may be the closest to that or am I wrong? Uh, so yes, I took an, uh, so I can take an action point to, like to coordinate with Kartik. We agreed during the last meeting to write uh, like a short letter inviting the crypto community to start the, the analysis of the protocol in the next six months. So now there is a question we'll be uh, proceeding with this in the next two weeks. Uh, I will, uh, I, but the corresponding issue is like whether we should have the working group last call in parallel to the security analysis or should we uh, essentially do this in sequence? Uh, yeah, yeah and, and you know, what does the word last mean in this last call space as well? Yeah, so. <laughs> so I get, I mean, we already have four reviewers committed to reviewing the draft, right? So. Yeah, I mean, I, I, so again, I mean, I'm I'm kind of neutral on this. The argument for, you know, taking draft twelve and saying we would like a working group last call is that sometimes that can prompt people to read it who wouldn't otherwise. Um, but on the other hand, we know it's not the last call because mm -hmm. we will probably be waiting for the analysis and more results from interop and so on. Um, so again, I, I welcome opinions from people as to whether we should uh, start talking about last calls or if that's better left for a while. So I, I think uh, I, I'd like to have an AD review at some point. And if the working group co last call is too late, then uh, we will miss Ben's review, which I, I'd like to have. So that's one reason uh, for waking it, uh, uh, working group last call, I suppose, or, or just inviting Ben to review. But I, I assume that would be more natural if, it's a, if it actually is a working group last call. Well, well no, so we're following the, that. You know, uh, the ID review would be triggered by the working group asking for publication. Uh, I mean, we can ask Ben if he's if he has a chance to look at it. That'd be great. Um, but you know, the review of the responsible ID happens after essentially the publication request from the working group. Yes, and you're right. We're we're kind of not there yet. Um, and Stephen, so this is Sean. I mean, I I think if if. Uh... If, if the authors believe that they're ready and have addressed all issues and they're just awaiting the security review, I got no problem with doing what other working groups have done, which is start a working group last call and just wait till you get done with the security review, make any changes you make as a result of that and just do another working group last call. So this can be a working group last call, but this is a very important way to move the draft forward, which is I'm pretty sure what the authors want. So I'm all for doing a working class, a working group last call sooner rather than later. Sure. Other other opinions? Or? I mean, I suppose that would also trigger sectir and other reviews, which are great if we could get sooner than later. So, yeah, I'm in favor. We, we we can we can ask for the various review teams to do an early review at any time. Um, so if the, if if you think that that's useful, specifically, we can just ask sectir to schedule it for a review, and a reviewer will be assigned. 
So that's you know those, those can be separate, but um, okay. So I think the the authors would like the the the, the phrase "last call" to be used. Uh, Sean suggests that's reasonable. Yeah, it's not exactly the correct semantics for the word "last," but never mind. Um, Okay, and then so roughly, um, let's see if we get these reviews on draft 12 and then uh, perhaps uh, kick off that kind of process once we see what those reviews contain. Is that reasonable? Sounds good. Malicia, sound okay? Yeah, that's perfect for me. Yeah. Okay. Um, in that case, we're we're about three minutes past the hour, but that's okay. I think we we didn't promise faithfully to be exactly less than an hour. Um, and thanks, Sean, for taking part. In, I know you have to go. So I guess we're at the any other business part of the agenda. Um, so is there any other business? If not, then thanks everybody for taking part. Um, thanks to the people who presented. Thanks to Jonathan for the, brought some great looking notes. Um, and we'll post a draft of the notes to the list uh, in the next day or so and go from there. Um, and yeah, if you're, you know, in terms of organizing for hackathons and so on, uh, Marco, if you can kind of drop a mail to the list uh, once or twice just to encourage people to take part, that might be good. And otherwise, I guess we'll have a militia. We did ask for a meeting. I think we scheduled a meeting for the next IETF. Right? Yes, we did make a request. I don't think it was scheduled uh, still, but uh, we did make a request. Yeah. So we will. You did, yeah. so you we did the request. I saw the email passing. Yeah. Yeah. So we are planning to not not meet but talk uh, again um, yeah. for the next IETF, and then hopefully sometime we might actually meet. <laughs> Actually, we met only once, and it was the uh, the kickoff meeting of the group. So that's kind of yes. Thing. Well, well, yeah. You never know. Let's aim to get the uh, the final round of beers meeting in person if we can. Looking forward to that. Okay. Yes, me too. Okay. With that, thank you. Uh, I'll stop the recording because I think we're done, and uh, talk to you on the list. And if not there at the ITF meeting virtually, thanks. Thank you. Thank you, bye-bye. Thank you. Bye -bye. Thank you. Thank you.